I'm here to uh, give you a spelling lesson. Um, as you can see, there is no I in e-commerce. Um, that's all you need to know. Uh, it's, it's actually pretty cool. So, perfect. So you might be asking, what is e-commerce? Um, it sounds like it's commerce that's all about me. It's something that I can do. It's something just me, 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 me. Um, and that makes sense because today, there's no, the, the opportunity to be able to participate in commerce has never been greater. Anybody can buy a template e-commerce, piece of a templated e-commerce software online, install it locally, connect it to a payment gateway, and start selling their products all over the world. Um, and actually, a lot of foreign experts have used this, uh, this definition when they're uh, talking. But what I would like to use for my presentation, and when I started thinking about it, I realized, wait, there's a pretty cool acronym that forms when you combine mobile commerce with electronic commerce. So we take the first letter of mobile commerce, first letter of electronic commerce, and you end up with me commerce. So, so what is mobile commerce? Uh, basically, it is the transacting of goods, services, money with your mobile phone. I think most people in this room probably have a smartphone. Uh, you know, you can get, uh, you can now buy things on it. You can uh, get notifications when, uh, say, a, a store that you're walking past on the street is having a sale. Uh, you can use it to transfer money. And one of the things is that it's it's huge in countries where there is no previous internet infrastructure. Places like Africa, where everybody has a mobile phone, but not everyone has a computer, and not everyone has access to the internet. So you see now companies in Africa um, really, really pushing mobile commerce as a way to give everyone an opportunity to participate. And it is the future of the cashless economy. Uh, in, in, within the next probably five years, all around the world, we are going to be using our mobile phones to, uh, to, to participate in commerce. Now, electronic commerce is effectively the same, but using the internet. So you, uh, you can uh, buy FIFA under 17 tickets online, you can uh, buy flight tickets, these kind of things. And the, the one problem with it is that you there are much greater requirements for use. Uh, you need a computer, you need access to the internet, you need uh, a bank account and a, and a card. Without those things, you can't really use it. So that's why you see it mu is much more popular in places where the internet already exists. Now let's just look at a simple example of how mobile commerce and economic or electronic commerce work together. Uh, for example, a person pays for gas using their mobile phone, they pull up to the pump, they swipe their phone, fill up their tank, pretty simple. Next, uh, the, that payment appears on their mobile phone bill. Then a person pays their mobile phone bill online with their credit card. And finally, then the gas station can pay their taxes online. Okay, that's great. Uh, but how does e-commerce or me-commerce affect the world that we live in? Um, we know that the world is rapidly globalizing. We are more connected than ever before. And it's something that people in this room, people in the, in the developed world have access to and they can participate. But there's a lot of people that have no access to these services. There's, there is no way that they, can, uh, that they can buy things online and they can transfer money, and et cetera. So, Let's take a look at three areas where I believe e-commerce uh, e has a net positive effect. And the first one is corruption, which is a big topic. Um, we can say that low-level corruption is probably much more likely to be affected positively by e-commerce. Um, this means simple bribes on the street, things like that. So let's look at taxes, because taxes is infamous for basically harboring corruption, corrupt practices. And we all know that everyone in this room, probably everyone around the world, is trying to avoid paying tax. Uh, name me one country in the world where people aren't trying to do that. Uh, and when that happens, when people try to lower their expenses, hide their income, it requires the need for bribes, because now you have to pay a bribe instead of paying your real tax. Uh, and what e-commerce does is it provides a record of all transactions, which means you can no longer hide the money you make. Uh, and this is great. This is great for governments. 
This is great for consumers, because they don't have to pay bribes anymore, and the governments increase their collection. But it's terrible, it's not very good for companies, because now they have to pay more tax. Um, and if you look at a place like Italy, where restaurants are, have to pay, I believe, 68% tax on their income, which for them, why would they want to pay more tax? It doesn't make any sense. So that is the downfall uh, with e-commerce and, and corruption, is that it's going to be difficult to convince companies to be able to, uh, to, to follow, uh, participate. The next is ooh, development. Um, one of the things that e-commerce allows you to do is it's an additional tool to expand your business. Um, walk into any bazaar in the developing world, walk into any village, and you'll find smart people that are entrepreneurs, that are doing great things. They just lack tools and resources. Uh, now, microfinance has been brilliant in, in providing people without these tools and resources with the ability to borrow money and actually expand their business. So, Imagine if these smart people are able to do a lot in their village, imagine what they could do with a computer, the internet, or a mobile phone. They could start selling their goods locally, uh, like outside of their village, at a national level, in other cities in their country, or even international. So they could now start uh, targeting people in, for example, Canada or, or Mexico with their, with their product or service. Uh, unfortunately, when you do that, you open yourself up for increased competition, because now you're competing with people from everywhere in the world. And e-commerce versus traffic. Uh, we all know the number of cars, especially in this country, is increasing rapidly. Uh, traffic, when, when you're sitting in traffic, you get stressed out, you get anxious. And uh, e-commerce means that you no longer have to leave the house to be able to accomplish your tasks. You can now pay your bills online. You can buy your groceries online. You, can, you don't actually have to get in your car, drive down the street to the grocery store. You can now, with, with John's new food uh, theory, you can probably order directly from the vertical food chain. So th this is perfect. now. And, and these delivery companies are strategically organizing their delivery routes so that only one truck has to go out to deliver to everybody. So it's uh, with fewer trips, fewer cars on the roads, in theory, yes, the traffic would decrease. So now let's look at some examples of how e-commerce e can affect real people. This was my, uh, my host father in Mongolia in 2005. I stayed with them for three months. And as you can see, he likes playing chef. Uh, I don't ever remember him cooking, but it, it doesn't hurt to dream. Uh, now, who is he? Uh, he writes a chess column for the local newspaper. Uh, he does it in Mongolian. Now, Mongolian is a language spoken by about 2.7 million people, not exactly popular around the world. And so only Mongolians can read it. Uh, now, corruption is, is terrible in the country, uh, so he gets paid in cash like almost everybody else. And uh, he keeps his money at home because starting a bank account is, is expensive and it's, a, it's, not, uh, it's not very convenient. So how can me commerce help him? Well, first of all, the internet enables content, content translation. So he gets it translated into English, and it can be translated into Azerbaijani, into uh, Spanish, into um, Turkmen, anything. And with his help of his English-speaking daughter, he can actually sell these publication, this, this uh, column to foreign publications, which means that now his, what he writes about when an international chess match takes place can now be read everywhere. Um, and then, he can make it easy, and he can actually collect money directly to his mobile phone, or he can start up a bank account and uh, receive money directly that way. And what this ultimately provides is greater security for his money. So he no longer has to uh, store it at home, and it's therefore no longer uh, susceptible to theft, fire, and flood, and all that stuff. So it's the bank insures it. Now let's take a look at a second guy. This is a chai master. Uh, in, in Haridwar, India. I was, I was there in 2005. Uh, and we sat down, he served us breakfast, and he, uh, he was, we were talking to him, and he was saying, you know, I own this chai and breakfast stand, and the problem is that my customers don't always have money. So they come up to me and they say, okay, can I please have tea and, and coffee? 
uh, and, and uh, omelets on credit. And he says, well, yeah, OK, because it means repeat business. However, it means he doesn't get cash. And that's quite difficult for him, because he has a family to feed. Um, now, he also doesn't have a bank account, because people in his profession don't have any opportunity to save. So he says, why do I need one? Um, and he keeps his earnings, anything he does make, locked up in a shop. And e-commerce can help him, because now I mean, customers can pay with their mobile phone. I mean, everybody seems to have mobile credit all the time. So they can just go up to his, his, his shop, swipe their mobile phone, and he gets the money transferred directly. Um, and now, he, of course, through that, he can store his money securely. Um, he can, uh, it's now on his mobile phone, to correct, uh, connected to an account that is insured. And of course, he can go around the city and pay for things with his mobile phone that, he, that he's earned. So, and it's also a very convenient payment option for tourists because imagine you're walking down the street on a crowded street in India and you see a sign that says, pay with your mobile phone. It makes a lot of sense. You're going to walk up, swipe your mobile phone. It's simple. No need to worry about cash and uh, that. So the cool thing is that the advanced stage for this guy would be to send out discount notifications to everybody walking down the street, uh, walking past his shop. He can send out a, a message that says, if you, within the next hour, if you come to my shop, I will give you free something, free, free breakfast, free lunch. And he can actually increase the, his reputation, his personal brand. So what should we take from this? Um, we know that e-commerce can connect people locally, nationally, and internationally like never before. We take and take that financial security uh, in the developing world can be improved. Economies can become cleaner, and cities can become less congested. And people can increase their standard of living while still preserving their cultural values. Now, the key word here is can. Um, and this is where we start to understand that there really is no I in me commerce. It isn't gonna, it's not about me, it's about everybody. It's about all of us working together to provide opportunities for people that do not have them presently. And so what can we do? Well, we can participate. That's the most important, one of the most important things we can do. If you can pay your bill online, pay your bill online. If you can order groceries, order groceries. And all of us need to do it. The more we do it, the more incentive there is for people to provide these services. Um, now, if you have the opportunity, start an online business. You start a business that accepts mobile payments. So this would be a great uh, opportunity to spread e-commerce throughout your country. And if they're not available, demand them. If you cannot order your groceries online, or if you cannot pay for your groceries with your mobile phone, go tell them about it. Say, I would like to be able to do this. Uh, why can't I? And, or if you can't pay your internet bill online, go to your internet provider. Tell them, hey, I want to be able to pay online. What, what's stopping you from doing that? And finally, and the most important step, spread the knowledge. Uh, as uh, Elchin said, teach. Let people know. Well, people that don't have the opportunity uh, and either don't have internet, don't have computers, or just aren't aware of how to use these things, let them know. Go to the regions, go to uh, villages, and let them know, look, this, this is available. This can make your life better. I'd like to thank you for your time. Um, thank you for listening to me. And <laughs>